Hello, this is Kelly from Root Pursuit, and today I'm gonna to give you seven ideas for how to construct or bind a junk journal. The first one, and the most common one, is sewing in signatures junk journal. So basically, that's where you take signatures, and signatures are folded uh, pieces of paper that are sewn into, and you can see the stitches here, that are sewn into the spine. So here also is the thread here, and I have covered up the holes with this decorative fabric, so it's a little bit hard to see. Most junk journals have between three and five signatures, and this one happens to have five. The tools that you need to create this one, a book binding kit, which include book binding thread, which needs to be pretty sturdy or wax coated, a needle and an awl to make the holes. Number two is envelope pages. So this is basically where you take a large group of envelopes and where you glue one envelope to the previous envelope. This is a super easy option. I did recently just create a tutorial on this. So if you are interested in seeing how to do that in greater detail, you can go ahead and click on the link in the description. I also have a great tip for keeping the spine even for a no sew solution. The tools or supplies that you need for this one are simply just envelopes. A hinge journal, which is also a no sew option. This is a nice way to add pages as you go. And as you do, the spine expands with it. So it's nice because the spine enlarges automatically as you add pages. Uh, this is an example of how I attach the pages together with some washi tape. So simply taping one pages next to each other and this is an example of where I used paper to glue two book pages together. The great thing about the hinge journal is you don't need any special tools or supplies. You really can do this with simply glue and paper. Number four is a pre-purchased scrapbook. This is a great solution for someone who's more interested in decorating and the creating the ephemera that you have in a junk journal as opposed to constructing or binding a book. The one recommendation that I have is select a book where it doesn't have plastic sleeves on it or you're able to remove the plastic sleeves. Number five is an altered book. Uh, this is a book that I got from the dollar store. I also often use old readers digest books. This method allows you to remove pages of an existing book to make room for your junk journal items. For a standard book, I tend to remove 70 to 90% of the pages or every seven to 10 pages. You can also alter any kind of bound book such as planners, address books, or composition notebook for a few examples. I do have a couple of tutorials on altered book process for prepping a book for a junk journal. Only tools and supplies you need for this is a used book and a craft knife to remove the pages. Number six is a traveler's notebook style binding. Generally, this binding involves one one piece soft cover. For instance, this one is leather and elastic tied around the spine to hold signatures. So this one, it does involve signatures and it could be sew in signatures or a no sew. Some people will sew the signatures together and then place them in the elastic band. You can also staple the signatures or you can leave them loose. Either way, the signatures are all removable in the traveler's notebook style. The only tools that you need for this is a soft cover and elastic. The only kind of tools that you need for this is a soft cover and some kind of elastic or stretchy ribbon or even stretch fabric. You can cut into strips. Number seven is a ribbon bound or ring bound book. This is another easy option. In order to create this book, you simply gather pages and use a hole punch to add holes to the side that you can tie in your ribbon or add binder rings. You can usually find binder rings at any office supply store. In this particular case, I ended up using envelopes as my pages. 
And a one tip is to remember not to tie your ribbon too tight or wait until the end to tie it so that you don't, that your journal can grow, your spine can grow as you add ephemera and you decorate your journal. The tools and supplies that you need to create these journals are a hole punch, a ribbon, or binder rings. I also wanted to give an honorable mention to piano tab binding. So this is a, a different kind of book that is rarer type to see with binding, but it is it has a really cool spine look and is very durable and structurally hardy. So if you're interested in that, you can always uh, search YouTube for uh, piano tab binding. Now I want to remember that none of these are considered the best method. They all have their own set of pros and cons. For beginners, I recommend choosing a binding that matches your skill set, uh, something that you feel comfortable with, and something that you also already maybe have the supplies for. I do have links for tutorials on how to make uh, different types of journals in the description below. So check those out if you're interested in learning one or all of those different types of journal binding. I hope this inspires you to maybe try something that you haven't tried before and feel confident to just sort of dive in and give something a chance. I do recommend if you are a beginner and you're a little bit hesitant to try making your own book, start small, start with a mini journal. That is super helpful for any of these projects because, you know, it just it just makes it so much easier. If you want to sew in a signature, just start with one signature. Um, if you want to do a ribbon bound, you know, just do like 10 pages. Uh, another one I did, I used an address book and created a mini journal. I hope this helps you. If you're interested in seeing more videos like these, go ahead and click subscribe. And as always, thanks for coming along and I'll talk to you later. If you're interested, if you're little, 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 little.